we've been talking about air tightness for so long. Today, we are going to talk about the arch enemy of our air barrier, the electrical penetration. All surfaces penetrations are our enemy to maintain the integrity of air barrier. However, compared to plumbing, mechanical and other building surfaces, the electrical is the most challenging because for plumbing penetrations, no matter it's a water pipe, sewage pipe or the mechanical ductwork, any penetration through the air barrier are fixed and well supported, but it's not the case for electrical cabling. Today, we are going to dive into the details on how many different methods we are commonly used to deal with this issue. Here, we have a sample board. It can be plywood, plasterboard, or any other rigid subsurface. The most common method to seal it is with a wet sealant caulking. Most trade know how to do it. It's not that hard, just squeeze the product until it fill the gap so you don't have any bubble or dead space. The process is this simple. However, this most common method have a very, very detrimental weakness. Number one, before it's dry, if anyone moves the cable, the seal is broken. Even after the sealant is dry or set. If someone starts to pull the cable, it still breaks the seal. And it's hard to control if people are going to pull on a cable, particularly when this electrician may be far away on the other side, needs some extra slack when they are fixing to the power point, to the switches. It's very easy to break the seal like that. It can get quite messy because it is a wet seal. Now we come to method number two, which is also a very common solution. We usually do it with our area air barrier tapes. For this kind of cable penetration, we highly recommend you use a tape that have a split backing, which means you can peel it off only half of the release liner at a time. The reason behind that is, if you got a hole like this, you can easily peel off half of it. You can cleanly tape and then seal without worrying the tape completely cover the hole. We can do the second half the same way. This time, we use the half with the release liner matching the first half. That way, we can be sure when the product is complete, it's going to fully seal to each other. The end result is like this. We still got the release liner. We can start to push the cable from behind. Or if the cable is already in, that's even easier. Then we can pull it across, get to the right length that we need, peel off the release liner, fix half of it so it's holding the cable in place. And then we can push it down a bit, peel off the other half. And then we can tie the squeeze them together and then from the wall side, pull it back out. So if there's any air bubble, we squeeze it out. Looks pretty good. After we squeeze the tape together, we use a plastic spatula to work to the edge to the corner to make sure it's tightly fit. Because the weakness of this method is this hole from the side where the two sheets of tape bond together to the surface. It's very easy to leave a small hole from the side. It may be small, but if you imagine if you got a hundred cable passing through, they all add up. And the other not as preferable outcome from this method is you still can't push or pull the cable anymore once it's fixed in. Now, we come to the third method, which, which is an improvement of this second method. We still use the same split backing tape, but we need to go through one extra step. We cut a small piece of the same tape. On the large piece of the main tape, we pull off the release liner a bit halfway on both sides like this. So we expose the middle of the tape 
and then we use the small piece to tape onto the back here. This way, we can create a portion of the tape that is not sticky. After that, we can use a standing knife to cut a small hole in the middle, which is similar to the size of the cable. Then we apply this piece to the hole, like normally how we deal with tape. And because I've put on a piece of tape at the back reverse, now when the cable comes through, the glue is not going to grip on the cable. It creates a reasonable seal, but still allows you to pull the cable until you got the other end fixed. Then we can come back and tape it as the second method. The best part about this method is you can still create the seal early. At the same time, you can be sure the gap you left behind is very, very minimal even smaller than the second method. Once again, we need to use the spatula to make sure the tapes are well bound and sealed. This is the third method. Now we come to the fourth method, which is going to use a very special tape. It's an extra stretchy tape that you can pull and stretch. I'm just putting in a piece of cable, pretending it's coming from behind. With this, extra stretch tape, we can put it on and stretch around the cable. Mold it to fit the size of the cable from both sides and leave no hole at all. We can push and pull to make sure it's very, very tightly fit and then we can see clearly the whole product is sealed. This method is excellent. The only drawback is this tape is quite expensive. This method is quick, easy. Even if you may not be on a flat and rigid surface, you can still stretch the product. Now we come to the fifth method. We need a special product, which is a P-formed fire rated putty. And we call this Panotite FR, it's fire rated. It's very easy to use. The texture is very similar to plasticine. All you need to do is remove the backing, the release liner from the side, slice it to the cable, and then you push it, work it. It will adhere to the substrate, and then you can mold around your cable. You can also use this on conduits and smaller pipes. This is moldable and is not fully stuck to the pipe or the cable. Sometimes if you accidentally pull the cable or the pipe, you can come back and rework it so it's sealed back to your cable. If you make a mistake, you can quite easily pull it back out and then reapply it. It works almost identical to the Play-Doh that everyone plays when they were young. And we can do it again, rub it around, roll it, push it in, work it. It's air and smoke tight, and it's also fire rated. Nice and clean solution. The last method is we use some of this rubber gasket product with the hole that is either pre-drilled or we can cut it with a hole puncher. Sometimes for electrical cables, you may want to punch a few holes because you got a few plugs in the same area that you need to send power to. To deal with this is extremely easy. All you need to do is pre-cut the hole and then you apply the high tech plus. Sometimes if you want to make your life a bit easier, just try to undo only half of the tape so you can easily hold it while applying the rubber gasket. Then you align the hole, push in, get your spatula or your roller to make sure is fully born to the substrate. And then just repeat the process on the other side. Always apply the tape on the gasket first, then pull it down. Make sure it's tightly straightened before you squeeze spatula on the substrate. That way the vertical line can be applied nicely. After we apply the gasket, 
is quite easy to just tuck the cable across and it remain flexible so you can push and pull very very easily and you can use different size hole puncher depends on how thick the cable that you need to use and likewise you can get the pre-cut circular gasket that is more suitable for pipes and conduits same process it creates a tight seal it allows you to keep moving the conduits and similarly if you got one bigger hole with multiple penetrations you cut the hole pre-apply the tape with a split backing release liner that way the process can be a lot easier once the holes are properly aligned we can release the remainder of the release liner and then fix it and there is a special reminder when you're doing multiple holes with one gasket make sure each hole you got at least 15 millimeters if not 25 gaps between otherwise the if the holes are too close together it can easily tear hmm looks like i'm one cable short but we get the idea when you order the rubber gaskets we have different sizes of the square available pick the size that suits your need and then it's very easy you use a hole puncher that fits the cable that you need to penetrate preferably doing it on a proper cutting mat that would make the cut a lot cleaner and then you just use a hammer then it's coming off and you got a nice and clean finish when picking the right size of the hole puncher you always try to make it at least two mil smaller than the actual cable or conduit that you want to put through the hole these are the common methods that we can effectively deal with electrical cable penetrations just one last reminder whenever we deal with tape we need to either use a plastic spatula or a roller to make sure that adhesion is formed sufficiently strong otherwise all your hard work can just got blown away with the wind and hopefully every builder every trade we work together to create more airtight homes all these products that we forementioned are available from tighthouse.com.au